Welcome to our overview of PERPS Plus session. We will take you through on how to log into your Purchase Plus account, navigate through Purchase Plus, view your suppliers and supplier catalogs, as well as how you can create and view your self-managed pricing catalogs, as well as on how you can create your buy lists, which will act as your favorite lists. So first up, we're gonna take a look at how to log into Purchase Plus. When you receive your login details, you will receive an email with an activation link. You will need to click onto that activation link to activate your account and then come to the login page of Purchase Plus and set your own password. To set your own password, you can select the forgot your password link here, enter your email address and you will receive instructions via email on how to choose your own password. This is for security purposes, so you ensure that your password is safe and individual to you. If you don't receive the activation email um, in your inbox, it might be that the um, activation email went to your spam folder, or if you're not sure, you can always request to have that activation link sent to you again via the didn't receive confirmation instructions. Click onto it and again, you enter your email address and then activation email will be resent to your email. Once you have chosen your own password, you enter your username, which is always your email address and your self chosen password. You sign in. You land on the home page of Purchase Plus, which provides you an overview of your purchasing statuses. First up, I want to focus on the top right corner of this view. Here you have the organization that you're working in. If you are working within across multiple properties, you are able to switch between properties by clicking onto the name and the pop-up window opens up and you are able to search for the organization that you would like to switch to. Select it, hit OK, and you have now switched to the organization that you have chosen. Next to it, we have the, your user account. Next to your name, you will see a little drop down um, box and you're able to view your user details. So you're able to view your name, email address, phone number, um, and you're able to change those details under your user account. You are also able to change your password from here. So two options to change your password, either while you are logged in or while via the forgot your password button on the prior login screen. At the end of the day, you are able to sign off. And this help button here is really quite powerful because it gives you access to our help center. Our help center offers you multiple help functions. It offers you to chat with one of us. So you can send us a message while clicking on send a message and just start typing your question. The team usually gets back to you within a very short time frame. 
the live chat is manned via um, for Australia based on Sydney time, 8.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. So within that time, you are able to reach one of our support team members. You are also able to search the help library. So you are able to type in keywords and then um, you are able to view certain help guides. A lot of the help guides will come with short videos, as well as always a step-by-step -step instruction with images on how you can execute the task. If you no longer need the help center, you are able to select the X. Also, we have this little self-help section here. This self-help self -help section houses all of the help guides that you can find in the help library, as well as guided flows. I will demonstrate to you the difference between guided flows and help guides. So again, you are able to input a keyword and you will receive suggestions. If you see this paper clip, that will be your help guide. And if you see this signpost, those are guided flows, which means guided flows appear on your screen and assist you with the task while you are doing this task. So there is no need to spend a lot of time reading through help guides. This explanation will take you through exactly what you need to do in order to execute the task. If you remember how to do it, you are always able to X out of the guide flow and continue on by yourself. Focusing on the left side here, I will take you through the main functions. So under dashboard, dashboard, we find our home screen. Our home screen really provides us an overview of our purchasing statuses. So we have requisitions awaiting my approval. So that means really the requisitions where your specific approval is required in order for a requisition to turn into a purchase order. If your notifications are turned on for every requisition that requires your approval, you will receive an email and you will be able to review and approve that requisition from your email. You're also able to log into Purchase Plus and view the requisitions that are awaiting your approval from here. Purchase orders not sent. So there is the possibility of automatically sending a purchase order once the purchase order is, once the requisition is approved and it turns into a purchase order, the purchase order is automatically sent. If that function is turned off, your purchase orders need to be manually marked as sent. The benefit in here is that you are able to consolidate purchase orders. So if you have multiple purchase orders for the same supplier, you can consolidate these purchase orders into one, which then leads to only one purchase order going out and also less invoices coming in. So you can reduce the document traffic going in and out. What you do have to make sure is if the automatic sending of purchase orders is 
off, you do have to make sure that you check this number here at the end of the day, so you're not missing out on any order cutoffs. Invoices flagged. So that is the invoices that um, are being sent to your paperless invoicing email address and could not be automatically matched to a purchase order or it has, they have been matched to a purchase order and something in the invoice doesn't align with the purchase order. So this number should never be this high. As you can see, this is my test account. So this number should definitely be kept very low because you always want to make sure you pay your suppliers on time and you stay on top of your invoices. Invoices awaiting my approval. That is the specific flagged invoices that are awaiting your specific review and approval in order for the invoice to move to a reconciled stage and then can be processed by finance. In the middle here, we have an overview of the current months, our purchase order send, our purchase order value, as well as the invoices process and the total value of our invoices, our top 10 suppliers, and top 10 products, all compared to the previous months, so that you have a little dashboard. Under dashboards, you are also able to access snapshots. Snapshots are all the reports that you can run from within Purchase Plus. So you can see there's a huge amount of snapshots and in other training sessions, I will refer to um, frequently used snapshots. Under documents, this is where your purchasing flows logically through. So you raise a requisition that is then submitted for approval. The approvers will need to review the requisition either via their email account or via Purchase Plus and approve that requisition in order for, to, for it to turn into a purchase order. The purchase orders are then sent to the supplier and the supplier will receive the purchase order and fulfill the purchase order and deliver the goods. Once the goods arrive at your property, you are then able to receive the purchase order. So to mark which products have been delivered to the hotel to ensure you are documenting what has been purchased versus what has been delivered. Every time you are documenting um, what has been delivered, receiving notes will be created that are documenting the exact time and quantity of the products you have received. Suppliers, as well as yourself, are able to send in PDF invoices to the paperless invoicing email address that is specific to your property. What the system will do, it will read the invoice, it will look for the purchase order number and see if something has been received for that purchase order. It will then compare the overall invoice value with the overall purchase order value, the unit price on the invoice with the unit price on the purchase order and the quantity received with the quantity invoiced. If everything aligns, that invoice moves straight to reconciled and can be processed by a finance team. If something doesn't align, for example, you haven't received any goods yet, 
or the unit price or the quantity or products or um, overall value differs to the approved purchase order, then that invoice will move to a flagged status and you will either need to receive the correct quantity or you will be required to review the invoice and approve the flagged invoice before it can move to a reconciled stage. You are able to create manual credit notes. You are not able at this point to send in credit notes to your paperless invoicing email address. Credit notes are created for invoices where you are receiving a credit from your supplier. And uh, catalogs, you are able to view your self-managed pricing catalogs. These are catalogs that you create yourself and where you manage the products and pricing yourself. Buy lists are your favorite lists where you are able to create lists that you are free of products that you're frequently purchasing purchasing in order for quickly raising requisitions. Under suppliers, my suppliers, you find all of these suppliers that you are able to trade with. Under settings, you will be able as an admin user only be able to access all settings. Okay, so this was navigating through Purchase Plus. Next, we take a deeper look at our suppliers. So under suppliers, my suppliers, you are able to access the full list of suppliers that your property is trading with. This list is maintained by your finance team. What you are able to see is that some suppliers have a star in front of their name and others don't. What this star means is that this is a formal supplier which has access to Purchase Plus and is able to provide you a product catalog. So that means this supplier will be maintaining a product catalog with up-to-date pricing for you. And you don't have to create your own product. You can rest assured that the products you are purchasing are at the correct price. A supplier without a star is an informal supplier. So that supplier has no access to Purchase Plus and hence cannot provide you a product catalog. Suppliers with no stars, informal suppliers are usually your service suppliers that don't offer you a product catalog or smaller suppliers that don't trade with a lot of properties. If you wish to view the product catalog of a former supplier, you can simply click onto the supplier name and you will be able to view the product catalog and pricing of the former supplier. What you are also able to do here is to set a default department and default account code for the supplier where you know that all invoices are being charged from that supplier to that account code or that department. Also under suppliers, my suppliers, you are able to find your paperless invoicing email address. 
So that paperless invoicing email address is a unique email address to your property where your suppliers as well as yourself can send in PDF invoices. It's really important to note that the invoice needs to be in a PDF format. You are able to scan paper invoices via a scanner and then save your scan as a PDF and then send an invoice into this email address, but it always needs to be in a PDF format. Okay, next up, we take a look at self-managed pricing catalogs. Under catalogs, we can find self-managed pricing. Self-managed pricing is used where you have an informal supplier that provides you goods. And because they are an informal supplier, they cannot provide you a product catalog themselves, which means you need to create a product catalog for that supplier and maintain the products and prices. If you want to view a self-managed pricing catalog, you look for your supplier that you want to view and you are then able to select the eyeball next to it. The eyeball will give you the chance to look into your self-managed pricing catalog and to view those products and prices within the self-managed pricing catalog. You're always able to search for products and you can read product descriptions. You are able to filter your columns by clicking onto the little drop-down arrow and selecting columns, and then choosing which columns you would like to hide or view. You're also able to sort columns, ascending and descending. You're able to read the brand description and sell unit. It is really important that you make sure the description and sell unit is correct. So for example, with this pen full Chiras, we have a 1.5 liter bottle, which is sold in a carton of six. So that means our sell unit price is the price for six 1.5 liter bottles. While the pan folds Grenache, a 1.5 liter bottle, each of one, the sale unit price is for one bottle instead of six bottles. So it's really important that you do read the descriptions and sell units because you are entering the price, you need to make sure that these prices are correct. You're able to enter the prices manually and entering the tax manually. It is important that you're always entering tax as well where you do have tax on a product. The sell unit price is considered excluding tax and the sell unit tax percentage column then adds tax automatically onto your sell unit price. So that when you raise a requisition, and you show specific quantity of your product, your price excluding tax and excluding tax is automatically calculated. Okay, 
If we now want to create a self-managed pricing catalog from scratch, we do have to do and the catalogs self-managed pricing, we can say the green plus icon. Always when you create something new, you always look out for the green plus icon because it will let you create something new. So we give it a name. It's always good to call self-managed pricing catalogs what they are in order to make sure that um, that you are choosing, um, that you mark that this is a self-managed pricing catalog um, rather than a supplier managed product catalog. You're then choosing the supplier this self-managed catalog is for and hit enter. It is important to note that self-managed pricing catalogs are per supplier because you are managing the products that this supplier is offering to you and maintaining the price that this supplier is offering you the product at. So then if we want to go into it to add products to this catalog, we again select the eyeball. And now we have a plain canvas. So we are able to, to add products to our self-managed pricing catalog. Again, we say the green plus icon which lets us access multiple options on where we can add products from. We can choose to add products from the master catalog or our buy list, that is our favorite list, if we already have them existing. Another self-managed pricing catalog or from a formal supplier catalog when we know that our informal supplier is also offering us the same product another former supplier is offering, we are able to cross-reference that same product in order to make sure that our quotes per product increase. And I'm gonna get into these quotes in a second. The master catalog, holds over 2 million plus product descriptions and is a good starting point for you if you don't have anything else available yet. Because this is a self-managed pricing catalog, what I always remember is you unticked priced only. Because with priced only, what you will get, you will only see products that already have a price attached to it. So for example, for stage one bunch, we can say that we do already have quotes. By clicking onto the quotes, we can say which suppliers are offering us at what price that product. We can also say the catalog, where this is coming from. So that is why it's important to always name your self-managed pricing catalogs, what they are, a self-managed pricing catalog. So now I'm taking this price only, we'll also show you product descriptions that have no prices yet. And because this is a self-managed pricing catalog, we are happy to have no prices yet because we will assign the price ourselves. So in this case, we are wanting to create a wine list. So we are able to search for a wine. It is, so for Pinot, I can say that I have a result of 428 pages worth of Pinot wines. So what you want to make sure is that you are being more specific with, for example, the brand or type of wine.
So the more specific you are, the smaller your search results will be. When you are looking for your products, what you have to make sure is you read the product description and pack size. So for example, the Pentwalls RWT Sheer Russ 1.5 liter bottle. This one comes in a carton of six or a carton of three. Or you can also search if you can get this, for example, in a each of one. Some product description come with a prefix of specific years that you are after. So you have to make sure you are reading the descriptions and choosing the correct product that you want. Once you have found your correct product description and pack size, all you have to do is click on the hand picker icon. And this has now added your product to your self-managed pricing catalog. If you want to add further products, you are able to continue to search and you are able to continue to select products for your self-managed pricing catalogs. So let's say we want a card of six of this, but we also want the option of just H of one as well. And you can continue to search for products and add them to your self-managed pricing catalog. Another option is that you choose a buy list so that you choose a buy list from, um, have to delete my product description. And then you are able to cross-reference, for example, products from a buy list or another self-managed pricing catalog or another supplier. If you can't find the product descriptions via these options, you're also able to create your own product descriptions. Are able to create your own product descriptions via this tab here called informal products. So still within your self-managed pricing catalog, you have this tab informal products here. Under this informal products tab, you have this green plus icon again, which lets you create your own product descriptions. So first up, you will need to choose a category. So if they want, for example, to have Pinot, we are able to search for our category that we want and select the category. We can enter a brand and we can enter an item description. Item size and item measure. So this is really important for especially your beverages or food items. So if this Pinot Noir comes in a 750 milliliter bottle, then your item size is 750 and item measure is milliliter. If this would be a Magnum, so a 1.5 liter, <laughs> bottle we have to enter 1.5 and item measure <coughs> sorry litter item cell quantity and item cell pack name so this is important so as you could see previously it was either carton of six or one h so if we want to have this as a cell unit as one each, we have to do is item cell quantity is one each. Item cell pack name would be then each. However, if this we, we want to buy this in a carton of six, for example, we would put in item cell quantity six and then put carton.
manufacturer is not ma mandatory, you can leave this blank. You can then save this. And now your item has been, your own part of the description has been created and has been added to the list of products under your self-managed pricing category. There's now two ways to add prices to your self-managed pricing catalog. You are either able to do this manually by entering the um, sell unit price and tax percentage and hit enter to save. Or alternatively, you are able to export this into a CSV file, enter your prices into the CSV file, and then import back the CSV file with the prices. So the prices are then auto populated. This is self managed pricing catalogs. So you are using self managed pricing catalogs wherever you have an informal supplier that can't provide you with a formal catalog of products and you are maintaining the products and prices for that supplier so you are able to purchase from that supplier. Next up is buy less. So as we could say that our self-managed pricing catalogs, they were per supplier that we had to create. Our buy lists are our favorite lists. They have nothing to do with product catalogs or assigning prices and view prices. They are really your favorite list of products. You can have products from multiple suppliers, in your buy list. The aim of a buy list is to speed up the raising of a requisition. So you are able to choose what categories of buy lists you want. As you can see here in my example of buy lists, I have like one main beverage list where may have all beverages in this list that the property wants to purchase. But I can also split it up. I can split it up per bar or restaurant. Or I can split it up by a beverage category. So I have a buy list per beer or for cocktails or for wine or for spirits. It's entirely up to you, the beverage manager, on how you want to structure your buy list so that it is the easiest for your team to quickly raise a requisition for the products that you want them to purchase. I'm giving examples of beverages, but the same goes for any food items or housekeeping items. You are able to create favorite catalogs for all the products that you buy on a frequent basis in order to buy the same products over and over again and to ensure you're buying it from your preferred suppliers. Okay, so if we want to look into uh, one of our buy lists, we are able to search for a buy list, but also able to select the eyeball in order to view our buy list. Our buy list holds products. Again, product descriptions, sell unit, and quotes. So all products within a buy list should have a quote. And if you want to say what the price is or what suppliers offer you um, um, this product at what price, you are able to click onto the quotes. That will then give you the supplier where this, um, the catalog name, as well as the unit price and tax percentage.
you are able to search your bylaws, so you are able to search, for example, for cola, and then you get your cola items. So you can say that your bylaws are really like just your detailed favorite list. So you don't have to go through a huge product catalog of your suppliers. You can add in all of your favorite products into your bylaws and have them quickly accessible. So how do I create a bylaws? Under catalogs, bylaws. We again have a green plus icon where we can choose a buy list name. So let's choose, for example, we are able per buy list to assign a department and a charging account. What this does is if you raise a requisition from this buy list, it already pre-populates your requisition with the correct charging department and correct charging account so that your team doesn't have to waste any time on selecting departments or charging accounts. You're able to use custom sort in order to custom sort the display of your products within your buy list. Hit save, that creates our product catalog. able to select the eyeball again in order to go into our bylaws and you can say we have a blank canvas again. Again, we have the green class icon in order to add products to our buy list. Same as with our self managed pricing catalog, we have different options of where we add products from. Just with a difference this time, we do want the price only ticked because we only want price items in our buy list because we, we are not assigning any prices here within our buy list. We have done that already. So we are able also to search straight from our suppliers catalogs by finding the supplier that we would like to purchase from and then selecting the products. We can search it. So I'm currently in the, um, in the supplier catalog. Um, of this supplier and I'm able to search their offering for us and their product catalog for us. So if I want, for example, die cola in a bib, I can search for that and then get the search results based on the products that this supplier is offering to me. You can again select the hand picker in order to add the product in. If I want to choose a self-managed pricing catalog, we're able to do is we are able to select self-managed pricing and the self-managed pricing catalog that we would like to add from. And able to select the product as well and so on. So you can also use the master catalog and search for items. We want, for example, a um, cola diet in a glass bottle, so they have a 30 milliliter and a carton of 24. We are able to add this as well to our product catalog. So now I can say these are all the products that I have currently added to my buy list. And if I want to delete anything from this buy list, I'm able to just select the bin icon, which then deletes the product from my buy list. Okay. 
Okay, and that is how to view and create a buyer list. Thank you very much for joining in. So what we have learned is how to log into Purchase Plus, how to navigate through Purchase Plus, how to view your suppliers under My Suppliers, how to create self-managed pricing catalogs, and how to create your buy lists for favorites. Thank you very much.